Hello, hello, hello. This is Tamika Peters, president and CEO of Grow Your Nonprofit, where we help startups, small and stagnant nonprofits grow through fundraising strategies, strategic planning, and so much more. Guys, today you're in for a treat. I have my special guest here, Alice Sweet. She'll tell you all about her global nonprofit, helping seven nonprofits globally. We'll get into it and the importance of strategic planning. But before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsors of my podcast. Trinity Life Foundation Naples, helping at-risk youth through their enrichment program. AVID, that stands for the Associations of Haitians Living Abroad. They just opened an amazing support center right here in the beautiful Fort Myers where they would help you with immigration support, utility billing, and English as a second language. Last but not least, Vax Truths. They just received a grant from the CDC to raise awareness of COVID-19 and vaccine resources in the black and brown communities. So guys, like I said, my special guest here, Alice Sweet. Yes, well, thank you so much for having me, Tamika. Thank you so much for uh, being here. We met actually uh, a few months ago at the Above, Above, Ch Above Board Chamber event. Mm -hmm. You had a table set up for your nonprofit. And I, I ventured over and introduced myself and welcomed you onto the podcast and you're here. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's thank a pleasure you. to be here. Thank you so much. So please share with our audience um, a little bit about yourself, the nonprofit that you, you founded. I understand you've been in the business for over 20 years helping the most vulnerable populations, um, the elderly and Lee Collier in Charlotte counties. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a new venture that you've been involved in since uh, founded in, well, founded in 2013, but um, organized as a nonprofit in 2016. Well, so I've actually started helping an orphanage in Bolivia 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and we formed the nonprofit in 2013. 2013 mm -hmm. Haven of Hope International. So I think you're the the first nonprofit. Well, we've had Goodwill, um, but you know, an international nonprofit. So I'm interested in why. I, I understand your trip to Bolivia, and that's the the model you use for your current nonprofit. Seeing children sleep on the streets, which was is really always heartbreaking, mm -hmm. and then the need to help nonprofits who are struggling. So, so can you uh, piggyback on that and tell us why that's important to help nonprofits that are struggling? You, you've adopted seven we've partnered, in different countries. We've partnered with seven orphanages in six countries. Wow. Uh, so the journey began with, with adopting one orphanage in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Mm -hmm. And we created a model there for children to thrive, just mm -hmm. like you would do for your own children. Mm -hmm. And we felt the need and we saw the need that there are a lot of orphanages just struggling to survive hmm. and so what we want to do is is take that model and help these other orphanages to provide quality care mm -hmm. so why are these organizations struggling primarily a lack of support mm -hmm. a lack of They've lost their ability to dream because it's been so hard. Look, uh, governments overseas typically do not support those homes. Mm -hmm. And you have well-meaning people, usually missionaries. Right. They start pulling kids off the street. They bring them in. We're going to take care of them. And they have, then they have 20, 30, 40, 50 kids. Right. And they're so busy trying to take care of those kids. They're not thinking about... Uh, how, what are we going to do two years from now, mm -hmm. five years from now? They don't think about strategic planning. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I love to do is go and, and find out what, if you could do anything, yes. what would you do here? Mm -hmm. What programs would you have? What would you, so we help them put together a strategic plan mm -hmm. for their home. And then we put together a budget. Mm -hmm. And then we come back here and tell people, here's who we've met. They're a great couple. They're doing this amazing work. They're established. And we've helped a few start. We actually just started one in uh, Peru this year. But we primarily work with those that have already started. Oh, wow. And then we come back and we fundraise. We help them in two ways. Strategic support. Mm -hmm. So we help them with what they can't do themselves. And that's usually psychologist, social worker. Mm -hmm. 
nutritious food, clean water. Those are those are luxuries there. Vocational training for their older kids. Mm -hmm. And then we we also include in their plan sustainability because you know that's important. Very important. For any yeah. organization. And so then we help fund those needs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then along with that, we, we provide training. Okay. Because it's important, as you know, and what you do. Yeah. If you, you can put together a strategic plan and you just give it to somebody, they need that ongoing coaching. Right. Right. and training and right. so we we provide uh, director training we provide trauma training we provide uh, crisis prevention training and we're getting ready to launch some first aid and medical training. Wow that's mm -hmm. very important work so you you mentioned director training what does that look like what are the the components of director training? I'm glad you asked <laughs> <laughs> because it's uh, again it goes back to strategic planning mm -hmm. so you, it, it uh, the the couple that are in Bolivia, Gladys and Marco Aldana, they've been working with that home there for 20 years, and they've developed a really great leadership team. They know how to do orphanage right. um, leadership. And so they start with a strategic plan with the directors. They look at what government can help with. They look at what their resources are, what the needs are, what demographic are they going to help, what type of children are they going to help, okay. what kind of needs. And then they build the team towards that. So they're very much involved in the strategic planning mm -hmm. piece of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's very important. So nonprofits locally, um, in which we specialize in, they're, they're struggling because, A, they perhaps don't have a strategic plan in place and they don't know how to fundraise and run their nonprofit like a business. So being an international nonprofit where the funds are not here locally, how do you get donors on board with, with helping nonprofits in other countries? So, uh, you know, a lot of... A lot of the, I looked at why people don't like to give. Right. Especially overseas. Because mm -hmm. they don't know where the money's going. Right. They don't know how it's going to be used. Like, ah, how do you really know? And there's been so much exploitation. Yeah. So um, we also, as a nonprofit, Haven of Hope International, we have our own strategic planning mm -hmm. meeting every year mm -hmm. with our board and our advisory board mm -hmm. on what are we going to do so that it's clearly mapped right. and we're accomplishing the goal. So when we tell people this is what we're going to do this year, we do it. Mm -hmm. And this is what our goal is for the next three years. We can speak to them. Uh, so having the strategic plan is important. Uh, the other piece is financial transparency mm -hmm. and accountability. So not only do we get our books audited every year, and our board member reviews them, board, mm -hmm. our board reviews them every month, we can ensure that there's financial transparency here. Mm -hmm. When we send monthly support to these homes, we have a field director in country, okay, not associated with the orphanage. Oh, interesting. So it's an outside person that's familiar with here's the, what the costs are. Mm -hmm. So we, because it's so different here. Yes. Here's the cost. They make sure it's a valid need. They make sure that they're not fundraising with other sources mm -hmm. for that same need. And so, uh, and then the homes are required to report every month. Wow. Copies of receipts, copies and pictures, wow. they tell the story. So before we send more money, we make right. sure that we're getting a report back. Hmm. We take that very seriously because people work very hard. Right. And having that appreciation that people are willing to give their hard-earned money mm -hmm. to help something, yes. um, we, we just don't take that lightly. Yeah, yeah that's very important because my, my first thought was, a lot of education, especially to donors here, but I, I like the transparency model that you're going by mm -hmm. as far as um, having a financially audited statement, um, requiring a progress report on a monthly basis, backed with receipts. So that's very important. And it also sends a message to that particular nonprofit that, hey, we're taking this real, really serious. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. So. On that path, are, are the nonprofits ever sustainable on their own or would they require monthly support? In addition to your monthly support, are we also training them how to fundraise and mm -hmm. how to um, ask for help? I know before we started recording the podcast, you mentioned that some of the churches or missionaries or other organizations that are picking up the children off the street, asking them for some sort of 
donation, whether it's in kind of clothing, food, or monetary. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what we found is a lot of these orphanages, they're barely surviving. They're in survival mode. The directors are in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And so once they understand that there's going to be some ongoing support, they can start relaxing a little bit. But that's where the training comes yes. in. And part of the training is teaching them how when people are dropping children off at your door, ask them to participate in mm -hmm. gifts in kind or monthly support or come and volunteer and be a mentor. Mm -hmm. They need to contribute yes. somehow yes. for for the work. And to answer your question on will they ever become fully sustainable, I would say as long as there's a need and there's orphans out there, mm -hmm. ideally it would be great for them to to build a great infrastructure and a great model that they could continue to right. expand that mm -hmm. to help more children. And there's always going to be some need to start a new program. It's startup expenses like any business. So like our sustainability programs that they want to do, we've got a home that's looking to do an agricultural sustainability mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Well, they need money for seed. They need money for right. the initial startup. So I do believe it'll be an ongoing partnership. Mm. Um, but we all need that because what we found is a lot of, a lot of uh, the, the orphanage directors, they feel very isolated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very alone. Yes. Sometimes we get that way over here. Oh, absolutely. Nonprofits, you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm working a thousand hours yeah. and yeah. nobody even knows what I'm doing. And yeah. uh, so what you do is so valuable because you're that you're that lifeline. Yeah. You're that yeah. one saying, you know what, you can do this, and yeah. let's look at your plan, yes. and let's figure out how we're gonna. And we do the same kind of thing mm -hmm. with the orphanages. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very important. So. Also, I was thinking about, you mentioned agriculture, are, are the, the different organizations, if there's is food an issue, are we starting like a community garden or mm -hmm. anything like that? All of the homes that we partner with do have some sort of sustainability, mm -hmm. um, from chickens to goats wow. to pigs to agriculture to solar. We've got, we just put solar in oh, this wow. home that we just opened up in Peru and in Tanzania, they've got some solar. Mm -hmm. But see, that costs money. Yes. And that's where that would cost. But at the end of the day, that's going to save the right. money. Right. And so there's always going to be some of those, those startup costs. But we also had a wonderful uh, board member, uh, Judy Teven, who her background is in product development. Mm. She got involved. She said, I want to help them with sustainability. So she's taught Bolivia how to upcycle recyclables mm. and how to make them something beautiful. Yeah. And so she volunteered her time to, to start that program and they are taking things that have been discarded and making something mm -hmm. beautiful out of them. Teaching the kids about marketing, teaching them oh, about wow. product development. Yeah, yeah. That's social entrepreneurship at its finest. Mm -hmm. And and I, I preach that a lot, especially at startup nonprofits. As you get going, before you're qualifying for grants, before, while you're building your donor base of support, is there something that you could sell or is there a service that you could provide? Is there a contract that you can uh, procure with the organization to get you on your way so that that's really great I'm also curious about uh, building a community of support so mm -hmm. say the local church is dropping off some of the children and other organizations is there a way in addition to that to get the community involved and support this organization in kind and also financially as well to really change the mindset um, of, you know, they're, they're throwaway kids and, you mm -hmm. know, we, sh we shouldn't help them. That's a challenge. Yeah. It is a challenge. And, um, you know, I can speak to what we've done here. People here in, in the States, they're a lot more giving. They're a lot more, uh, there's a lot more access to funds. Right. And a lot of these countries, I think there's two things that, that hurt them is, number one, there's kids everywhere. Mm. It's not like here. So it's really not a crisis. Interesting. And in they're mind. used to it. Right. They see it a lot. And, um, and there's so much poverty, mm. extreme poverty. And so there's, the people who are doing well, what we try to do, like with this product development, we try and go to the higher end neighborhoods to sell some of these mm. things. 
because they are the ones that would be able to support mm. the work. But, you know, if economically that the, those areas were in better shape, they wouldn't have so many children so on it, the streets. But I could yeah. speak to here how we try and get people involved. Yeah. Um, because I think it's important it's important to connect with other organizations mm -hmm. that can support your your work mm -hmm. like we partner with men and women of action and they send construction teams overseas mm. that's their niche okay but they're helping us build buildings that are needed over overseas and so we may not have all the right. whole solution we have to provide everything right but partnering with other organizations that can help uh, partnering with churches who mm -hmm. are called to the orphan oh yeah and getting churches involved because that's their mission and they want to help overseas mm -hmm. so we love to work with churches um to to do really impactful missions trips let's not go send them and paint the same wall 10 times because yes. we've seen yes. that happen yeah but if we have the strategic plan for that home yeah then the church can go and support Mm -hmm. what that is mm -hmm. and help further the whole mm -hmm. vision uh, and it works really well. Right. What's so great about a strategic plan, an uh, uh, organization such as the church who wants to adopt a particular Orphans. organization? <laughs> orphanage they can look at one particular goal within that yes. strategic plan and say hey we yes. want to support this yes so that's what's important to and and that's helped our organization because as i said we've got a strategic plan mm -hmm. we know what our needs are we know what we want to roll out in order to do that we have these steps and so when we have donors that look and say wow we love what you're doing what are your needs we can go to it and say this is what we need mm -hmm. so so how does your organization remains sustainable um, for the long run to continue supporting these organizations, this, yeah, these organizations for generations to come. So uh, part of our sustainability um, plan, we've got, we just uh, launched an internship program in Bolivia. So that's our model, mm -hmm. the model of care that we want to duplicate in other homes. And so, uh, we launched an internship program for college students that are have a focus of psychology, um, social work, and education, three areas that are very much needed in orphanages. So they have an opportunity to go down there and spend six months or a year mm -hmm. and see what a quality model of care looks like yeah, in orphan yeah. care. And so what we're believing is these kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna wanna continue to help mm -hmm. because it, it's heartbreaking to see these kids they're so precious i bet you they're always smiling oh, happy. They, well they are when they're in a good environment right. so yeah. i've also seen when they're in these homes barely surviving yeah. the kids countenance is not yeah as good but when you see that and you he read their their history and where they came from and you could see oh my gosh look at the difference in these mm. children mm. you want to be a part of that and yeah. so so that is one of the ways we also um, we also I, I know you're familiar with planned giving. Yes, so yes, we have very important. Planned giving that we promote uh, is so important to get an endowment fund set up and mm -hmm. and people who are um, her supporters during their lifetime. Usually, their largest gift is made after yes, their yes, life, and yes. so that is a part of our plan as well. Um, and getting people intricately involved. Mm -hmm. We have, that's why we have an, a board, the advisory board, and a board of influence, mm -hmm. and we take teams down there to see, because when you really see the impact, yes. then you know you want to continue to support. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this beautiful flag we hear we have here mm -hmm. at the coffee table. Mm -hmm. So you know, currently we are helping seven homes in six countries. It's over 200 children that are orphans, and. Um, when I would go and speak, uh, I started looking at statistics actually before I started the um, nonprofit because I knew there was a need to help other homes, but I did not realize how vast the need was. Yes. And so I started looking at UNICEF numbers, and there's 153 million orphans globally. Wow, wow. They would be the ninth largest nation in the world. Hmm. And I would go and I would speak and say, you know, we're just helping. 200 children right now, but I just want to be a voice for these other children because this is a voiceless nation. And here's the saddest, the part about it is there's a crisis in this nation. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about adoption and they talk about prevention. 
But the reality is 99% of these children will never be adopted. Mm -hmm. Tamika, that's heartbreaking. That, that's heartbreaking. And also you mentioned at, at age 18, they're kicked out of these homes and the, the boys typically return turn to crime yes. and girls typically maybe return to prostitution and about 15% are suicidal or yes. commit suicide. Yes, it's 60% of the boys life of crime, 70% of the girls prostitution because what has happened is they've just been warehoused in right. these homes. Right. They haven't been, Skills. there's no, no addressing the trauma that brought right. them in, right. which is part of what we do with our trauma training and there's no vocational training. So you've kept them safe for all these years, but then they, they leave. There's no grants. Yeah. There's no, um, for. we actually have a Futures of Hope program. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we support the homes, but we also support these kids going out where they have opportunity for support. Mm -hmm. um, we This past year, we helped, I believe it was 35 kids with vocational and, and secondary education so that they could pursue their dreams. Wow. So so once they're they're 18 and, and they're out, what happens to them if you don't catch them early with the, the skills and the training? Is there another the, home that they can go to or they're just out on the street and they, you had, the orphanage has to make room for the next child? Yeah, and depending on the orphanage, you know, there's some good orphanages. They want to try and keep helping, but meanwhile, they have more kids coming in. And that's, again, we're trying to get them out of that survival mode and into thriving homes. So that, and part of that is a transition program. Mm. So like in Bolivia, which is the model, they have an on-campus transition program so they can become junior leaders. Mm -hmm. They can help with the younger kids. Right, they can right. set example while That's they're going just to go to college. Yeah. We've got an on-campus, we have an off-campus transition mm. program. Mm. So kids that um, want to move off campus have some independence. And then we also have host families so if if the home does what we we coach them to do get involved with local churches and organizations mm -hmm. and they start having mentors then they'll be likely to take in one of these yes. kids yes. as they get older yes. and be around more of a family uh model and so and i will say this that that these these directors i just can't say enough about them they're just amazing because they're laying their lives down to help these kids and the one thing that was just really flooring to me is when I would go, first time I went to Africa five years ago, the kids, I'd ask the kids, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And they're telling me, an engineer, wow. a doctor. And, I, and I'm looking around and I'm going, you barely have electricity. Mm -hmm. You don't have running water in your bathrooms. You have no access to Wi-Fi back then. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first things we did with all the homes is get them, well, during COVID, <laughs> during COVID, because yeah. they had to do online learning. But but the, the directors are teaching them to dream. Yes. Meanwhile, the directors are trying to figure out how are they going to put food on the table. And I thought, those are the directors I want to help. Mm -hmm. That's the ones that we just need to help you with a strategic plan. Right. right. Let's figure out how we're going to fund this and let's share this with people and they'll want to get involved. Yeah, that's very, very important because if you don't have hope, what, what do you have? That's right. Yeah, it's everything. This past year when we told the one director that we were going to be able to fund 24 kids to go on to, she started to cry. Wow. She said, Alice, you know, I, we teach these kids to dream. We teach them they got to study hard. Some kids walk 45 minutes a day to get to school mm. every day, each way. Wow. They're so determined. And she said, then they, they graduate and we have nothing for them. Mm -hmm. So this is so amazing because now it's teaching the younger kids. Yes. Yes, because I'm seeing my older brothers and sisters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are pursuing their dreams and we can too. Yeah, that's very important. Mm -hmm. so, so before we wrap up, can you share with our audience how to reach out to you? Mm -hmm. So they want to make an, a donation or they want to get involved. Uh, your contact information will show up on the screen. Okay. Uh, yes, we would love to expand our family of hope 
for these kids. That's what we call ourselves. We are extended family. Uh, you can visit our website. It's havenofhopeintl.org. You can sponsor a child. You can sponsor a home. You can sponsor a program. Uh, and Orphan Sunday is coming up. Okay. So Orphan Sunday is November 12th, and it is recognized internationally as a day of awareness for orphans. And we're, we're asking people to take a knee on Orphan Sunday. Uh, and choose, you can get involved with sponsoring a child, sponsoring a home. And, 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 and how, can you share with us the numbers, the cost to sponsor a child, to mm-hmm. sponsor a home, those those different uh, programs? They say, yes. Yep. Because some people may be intimidated. And, right. And I'm sure it, it, it's reachable because if we go to Starbucks or if we go <laughs> purchase lunch or some silly mm-hmm. pair of shoes or handbags, we surely can help a, yes. a child. Yes. Well, so child sponsorship is starts at thirty dollars a month. Thirty dollars a month, guys. And we have a very unique child sponsorship that you can schedule a fifteen minute Zoom call with your child with a translator, and you can bring the whole family, mm-hmm. let your kids see what you're yeah. doing. You know, encourage that philanthropy in your family. Yeah. Uh, so you can do that. We also have some project needs. We've got uh, a hope center in Peru that we're adding on a second floor. Um, that's that is currently that's a bigger need. That's twenty six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. We've got fifteen thousand raised. Mm-hmm. We've also got a dream center in Kenya wow. that we're raising funds for. And I'll tell you that um, we we have uh, a local local church and school that is selling Christmas trees this year. Oh wow! It's um, New Life Assembly, and they're up off of Palm Beach, just across from Terry Park. Okay, okay, that's in my neighborhood. They're going to be sending, yeah. sending, uh, selling Christmas trees, and that's going to help provide Christmas for the kids. Wow! But uh, you know, one of the things as we're talking about the Nation of Orphans, one of the ways that we we tell people you can get involved is you can become an ambassador for the Nation of Orphans. And in three ways, you can pray, advocate, and support. And just even sharing this podcast and Mm -hmm. going to our website, you can look at Nation of Orphans is on our website. You can look at Orphan Sunday, Mm -hmm. all kinds of ideas, uh, ways you can get involved. You can host a dinner in your home. Wow. We we do so many trips. We are doing virtual vision trips. Wow. So like some of these communities have little movie theaters. Yes. So we're doing virtual vision trips because the the biggest thing in spanning international work to here is helping people understand really what they go through over there and there's nothing like going mm-hmm. but if you can't go then they can at least see yeah. through a virtual vision trip yeah. but i did want to also just share too my husband is dr john sweet and mm-hmm. he's the director of heart of florida youth ranch mm-hmm. so we are helping here locally mm-hmm. He's got a 38-bed residential wow. treatment facility for, it's for foster kids, but they either have been trafficked or they're at risk for wow. being trafficked. Wow, wow. And with Sound of Freedom coming out, people are talking about this all the time, but the reality is all of our kids have been trafficked. They don't call it that right. overseas, but they've all been right. abused. So, um, but God's in the restoration business. Right, right. So and you're so, doing amazing So we're looking work. forward to seeing their lives change. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Alice, for thank coming you. on the Grow Your Nonprofit podcast to raise awareness of this very important work that you're doing globally. Haven of Hope International is doing very important work um, with all these different children. Over 200 children? Over 200 children, impacting. yes. So very important. So I, fi- I hope that you find it in your heart to either become an ambassador, sponsor a child, or even a home. There's all sorts of ways for you guys to get involved. <laughs> I really enjoy when I hear nonprofits who believe in strategic planning. <laughs> and also, which what they're doing is really great. They're setting up other nonprofits to be successful and sustainable on their own so that they are helping the next generation who could become a doctor, a lawyer, right. or a plumber, electrician. Right. So guys, thank you so much uh, for watching the Grow Your Nonprofit podcast. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more Grow Your Nonprofit podcast episodes.